My name's Matt. It's my pleasure to host you here at Southridge Church Online. You know, we don't believe that you're here, you're here by accident. We believe that God has orchestrated this moment for us to connect today. You know, we're a church on a mission, and that mission is seeing lives changed for Jesus. Now, we believe that how that happens is really being um, just genuine and through a genuine um, interaction with Him. Now, whether this is your first time in a church or it's your millionth time, Jesus changes us when we have that real, genuine interaction. So let's be real with God today, all right? Now, one of our core values is being intentional. Now, being intentional is really about connecting ministry with what's happening in our, in our world today and really focusing on multiplication. Now, we believe that just going through religion is, is really just pointless. You know, all those do's and don'ts, it's not about that. It's about having a real relationship with Jesus. Now, I've got one big announcement. That is all about life group signups. Life groups are our small groups here at Southridge. They meet in homes, they meet virtually, um, maybe it's in a, co a local coffee shop. But what that is, is really how we interact with, with a small group and from a big church, right? So we take a small group of people and we're just all learning from each other about God. So I just wanna encourage you to go to southridgelife.com, our connection hub, which is southridgelife.com, check out the groups and get signed up today. No, we're going to take on signups over the next couple weeks and we're going to talk about it again, but really encourage you to get signed up now and get signed up early before your spot's filled. All right? Now, we're going to kick off the, the message, God at the Movies, so let's get into the message. One person's life is changed by what I go through. It will all be worth it. You've always taught me to fight for the people who need the help the most. You're doing is gonna make a lot of people upset. Mr. Blanc, I know who you are. I just buried my 85-year-old father. Why are you here? You think Roosevelt beat Hitler? Think again. This isn't the first time Ford Motors has gone to war in Europe. <laughs> when people get desperate, the knives come out. Hey, welcome to Southridge Church Online. So glad that you chose to join us today. Uh, exciting day uh, for us. We've got a couple big things happening. We're kicking off a brand new series called God at the Movies, uh, with something we've done for the last several like 10, 15 years now. And uh, so we're excited about that. And then also today is our Kingdom Builders One Day to Feed the World focused offering. We've been talking about it for four weeks now, I think, and uh, just encouraging people to be a part of Kingdom Builders and One Day to Feed the World and make a difference in the world. Um, so here's, here's kind of what the background of this. So uh, several months ago, Easter to be precise, we had planned to receive a uh, offering, a focused offering with Kingdom Builders that would go towards our partner, Convoy of Hope, to help feed children and empower women around the world that are in really desperate situations, uh, just food-wise and, and being able to make it. And so we didn't do that because of the COVID thing. And so we pushed the pause button, but we knew, man, we, we've got to come back to this. We've got to do this. And so this weekend is the redo, if you will, of making a difference in the world through Kingdom Builders, One Day to Feed the World Focus. And so uh, I want to show you a video. Basically, it's a video about uh, kids that, that really live in harsh situations and how Convoy of Hope has partnered with a local school in a situation to make a difference. So check this video out and then I'll come back and kind of give you some instructions how you can be a part of it. I went through a lot of ups and downs when my husband died. After he passed, I had to become stronger and I struggled to provide for my children. My daughter told me that food would be provided for her at school through Convoy of Hope. 
I was overjoyed because I didn't have to worry about her being hungry anymore. Through my daughter's participation in the feeding program, I learned about Convoy's Women's Empowerment Program. Since 2010, more than 3,000 women, destitute women, uh, in absolute poverty have been economically empowered. We are uh, taking the mothers of the school feeding children and bring them to our Women Economic Empowerment Program so that sustainably they can feed their children in the future. Through the training, we learned how to make injera and how to run a business. After I joined the Women's Empowerment Project, I have seen so many changes in my family's life. I don't worry because I'm not in debt anymore. I have money to buy food and I can provide for my children. I even have a savings. Women who cannot eat daily, now beyond that, they have started saving, they have expanded their businesses, they have expanded their income, they are improving the livelihood of their children, so they are models in the community. The community is learning much from them. That's amazing. I can't even express my happiness because I never expected days like this would come. The help we received from the Women's Empowerment and Children's Feeding Programs has changed our lives. If my husband was alive, he would be proud. Thank you very, very much. Isn't that an amazing video? You know, just, just that one line in that it says that we can provide security for them that allows them to live the dream or, or to embrace this dream idea. We give them the chance, if you will. Um, so it's really simple. Uh, the whole one day to feed the world idea is, is this, is that you would calculate how much do I make in a day and dedicate that to help feeding children around the world and stateside, because right now it's Convoy of Hope is even doing things on the state stateside level as well. And so you can be a part of it very simply. Now, all you have to do is you can go to our, our website, southridgelife.com, and click on the Give button. I think we'll have a specific tab there that says Kingdom Builders, and just make that 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 investment, if you will, to change people's lives. So really excited about it. Thank you for being a partner in making a difference in the world for Jesus. Uh, let's pray, and then we're going to jump into the message. Lord, I'm, I'm so grateful for people that really have a heart to see uh, Jesus lived out in the world around them. And so, Lord, as we give towards this, as, as we begin to embrace what you're doing around the world uh, through Convoy of Hope, God, use it for your glory. And Lord, I pray today that God, as we jump into the message, that God, our hearts and our ears would be open to what the Spirit would say to us, that we would hear you. Lord, let it be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So like I said before, every year uh, we do a series called God at the Movies. Uh, very, very simply what it is, is we're using what is familiar, movies, uh, to highlight or uncover a spiritual truth. Now, this is nothing new. Jesus did this all the time. It was called parables back in the day, right? I mean, use something that's maybe familiar to explain something unfamiliar or, or maybe uncover a truth. Jesus did that. So today, we're jumping into our series with a movie that's based on a true story. I love doing them on true stories. They kind of draw me in a little bit more. But the movie's called Ford versus Ferrari that's set back in the mid-60s. Uh, great movie. And by the way, we always throw out a disclaimer that says we're not saying we agree with everything and, 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 and say that everything they say is true. And uh, that's not what we're doing. We're just using it as a platform to produce or, or not produce, but to highlight a spiritual truth. So that's what we're doing. So let's check out the trailer and, and I'll kind of give you a little bit of a feel for what's going on. And then we'll come back and we'll just dive in and start to maybe learn the lesson that God has for us today. So check out the trailer. Look out there. Out there is the perfect lap. You see it? I think so. Most people can't. Carol Shelby, maybe. Lee I. Coca, Ford Motor. Suppose Henry Ford II wanted to build the greatest race car the world's ever seen to win the 24 hours of Le Mans. What's it take? Well, it takes something money can't buy. Money can buy speed. 
What in about speed? We need a pure racer behind the wheel of your car. That's Ken Miles. I don't trust him an inch. We heard he's difficult. No, no, Ken's a puppy dog. No, whatever it is, Shell, no. Trust me. You're gonna build a car to beat Ferrari with a Ford. Correct. And how long did you tell them that you needed? Two, three hundred years? 90 days. <laughs> This isn't the first time Ford Motors has gone to war. We know how to do more than push paper. Go ahead, Carol. Go to war. Thank you, sir. Do you think you can beat Ferrari? I can try. We're lighter, we're faster. That don't work, we're nastier. Make history. You ready? I was born ready, Mr. Shelby. Hit it. I love that. I mean, you know, the Ford versus Ferrari movie is this real guy kind of movie, you know, RPMs and going fast. And I mean, even as I, I, I watched, I, I just enjoyed it a lot because I realized I like to go fast. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, you know, my earlier days, I remember riding motorcycles fast as we could go. And then I actually learned how to drive in a dune buggy at the lake on the beaches. I mean, just going as fast as you could, you know, 13, 14 years old, learning how to drive. I mean, so I loved it. And then I had my first real experience with going really fast when I was like 16, 15. I had a buddy of mine who had a 67 Camaro convertible that had all the bells and whistles and had it souped up to go fast. I mean, it was drag, drag rates fast. And so we went outside of town and, and he kind of got it all lined up. He said, hang on. I was like, okay, whatever. And he punched it, man. It was scary. The thing was going left and right. He finally got it going straight. I mean, we were going really fast. And, and I was scared, but I loved it. So this, this whole movie is about going fast and racing. And so it's really kind of cool. Um, so let's talk about what's going on in this story. There, there's this race called the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It's in France. And it's, a, it's an old race. I mean, we're talking, it started in 1923. It's almost 100 years old. It's not your typical race. It's actually considered one of the most prestigious races in the world uh, because of this. It's the Grand Prix, if you will, of endurance and efficiency. Endurance and efficiency. I mean, it's it's different than most races because most races you just go around in a circle, you know, and you do 500 laps and you're done or 200 laps, you're done. But this race is actually a 24 hour long race that you battle fatigue and you battle weather, you battle vehicle malfunction and breakdown, all these different things. Matter of fact, <clears throat> The record, I went and did some research, the record right now in a 24-hour period for Le Mans is uh, 3,360 miles. I mean, that's like crazy that they just, you know, drove nonstop and made that happen. Now, a team of two to three drivers uh, battled this, and, and they all do that. And, and the whole goal is just to finish the race, to be honest with it first. And then if you can, I mean, goes for, goes far or furthest than anybody else or farther, farther than anybody else. In 2019, I did a little research, 47 out of the 60 cars that entered actually finished. So 13 of them didn't even finish the race. It's a race that is all about endurance, all about endurance, which leads us to our spiritual thought for today. And here it is. As followers of Christ, if you're a follower of Christ, or maybe you're considering being a follower of Christ, that we're called or invited by God to run a race of endurance, to run a race. 
It's this spiritual idea that I'm going to endure and go somewhere. I'm going to be on a marathon. It's not a 50-yard dash. It's a, it's a marathon. Now, Scripture actually compares our spiritual journey to being things like farmers and builders and soldiers and runners. So this whole idea of using this as a background for a spiritual thought is nothing new. Now, one real quick thought, though, about the race. The race is not against each other. It's, nor is it to go faster than anybody else for us in this spiritual race, but to faithfully finish with endurance. That's, that's the race that we're talking about. So let's jump into the text. Just three verses found in Hebrews chapter 12. And here's what it says. It says, therefore, and every time you see a therefore, you have to ask, why is the there, therefore? I mean, what's, what's, why is it there? And really, it's, it's because of chapter 11, which is called the, the Heroes of the Faith chapter, where it's these stories of all these people that ran a race and did it well, right? And so, so it goes, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us, I mean, now us, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance, there's the phrase, endurance, the race God has set before us. In other words, God has a race for you and I to win. In other words, God wants to invite you into something called the, the life and walk of faith, a race of faith, if you will, in this context, and to win. I mean, God's setting it up. He's, he's inviting you to be a part of it. And then it goes on. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured. And three times in this text, the word endure, endurance or endured is mentioned. He says, endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he, Jesus, endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. So, so really what we're saying is this, is our spiritual journey is much like the 24 hours of Le Mans. It's much like this story that we're, we're, we're following, this movie that we're following, Ford versus Ferrari. It, it involves things like preparation and starting well and dealing with obstacles and crossing the finish line. It's a long distance race that requires endurance. It's, it's kind of an interesting thing because the way they start at, at the 24 Hours of Le Mans is they actually have all the cars lined up along the uh, the the starting block, if you will, and all the racers, the drivers are across the road from it. And they have to run and jump in their car and start their engines. That's where we get the phrase, gentlemen, start your engines. And they would just book across and jump in and, and people would wreck. And so they had to change how they started. It's kind of a cool little thought, but not, not cool that they wrecked, but I mean, you, you know what I mean. So our first clip is, is Lee Iacocca. You might have heard that name before. He meets up with a guy named Carol Shelby, who's a very famous race car guy and race car builder and car builder. A lot of guys know about him to see what it would take to win the race of Le Mans and build a car to beat Ferrari. So check out this video as Iacocca meets with Carol Shelby. Warren, I help you. Carol Shelby. Maybe. The I Coke, Ford Motor. What's with the wrench? That? Oh, long story. We are just going from strength to strength here, Lee. Terrific sales. We're killing it on the track. Now, I know I owe Ford for that last batch of engines. Mr. Shelby, I can assure you I'm not here for money that you might owe Ford for spare parts. You're not. No, I'm not. Okay. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Ford, Henry Ford II. Suppose, um, hypothetically, that he wanted his company to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans. You're one of the only Americans that's ever done it, so I'm, uh, I'm wondering, what's it take? Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Well, it takes something money can't buy. Money can buy speed. But it isn't about speed, Lee. It's not just like those other tracks where all you do is turn to the left for four hours. 
To win that race, you need a car that's light enough to do 200 on the straightaways, but strong enough to keep that up for 3,000 miles without a break. Not just the best car y'all have ever made, but better than anything that Enzo Ferrari shows up with that year. And that just gets you to the green flag. That's where your problems really start. So you're saying it's challenging. Look, it's not even a track, Lee. Le Mans eight and a half miles of country road. It's narrow, ungraded, it's rough. There's no camber on the turns, no rails. You gotta do that for 24 hours. 24 hours, Lee. That means night. You know, half that race is in the dark, you can't see. Cars coming up on you out of nowhere. Drivers stumbling around the track, pouring blood. Maybe one of them's your friend. Maybe, maybe he's on fire. You're exhausted, you're hungry, can't remember your name, what country you're in. And all of a sudden you realize you're doing 198 on a straight. And if anything goes wrong, you blow a gasket, five cent washer. That's it, whole thing's over. Ferrari wins again. It's like he won last year, year before that, year before that. Yeah, it's challenging. So, cool little clip. Two things jump out, I think, for us right there from, from this, this idea of what's it take to win the race. And, and I think right away, you, you heard it from Shelby. I mean, he, he, he was talking about, man, this takes a lot of commitment. You have to commit to the race. And secondly, I, he kind of says it in a roundabout way. It's challenging, but it's possible. I mean, he's done it. He's actually one of the only Americans that have ever won before that time the, the race itself. And so here he's saying it's challenging, but it's possible. Just like God inviting you and I to this journey, it's possible, but it's going to be challenging. So let's ask this question. We're all called to win, but how are we going to win? I mean, how, how are we going to do this? And so I want to talk real quickly as we look at a few more clips, uh, four steps to winning the race of faith, R-A-C-E. We're going to do a little acronym today. So let's just dive in. Here's the first one. It's R and it's run. Run with endurance. Hebrews 12, 1 says it this way. Let us run with endurance. The race God has set before us. The idea of endurance. See, the definition of endurance is the ability or the strength that we have to continue to last. In other words, it's not going to break down and fail, especially through fatigue, stress, pain, and other adverse conditions. Now, let's just be really honest. Most of us, many of us, Man, the first moment it feels stressful or we get tired, we tap out. We say, I'm out of here. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, and endurance isn't part of the story. It's like, man, I, I, I got to get a glass of tea. I got, I got to find a place to sit back and kick my, tea, my feet up. I mean, we're not looking for the push through part of it. We're looking for the easy part of it. And so this endurance idea has with it maybe a little pain. Now, here's an interesting thought. The Greek word for, for the word race is agona. Agona, A-G-O-N-A, -A. agona. Kind of sounds familiar, right? Because we get the word agony from that word. You know, so it's this idea that there's pain and there's difficulty, but in the running of the race, it's worth it because that's what allows us to get to the finish line and actually win. Endurance. I mean, it's the strength and the stamina to finish the race. So my question to you today is very simply this. How is your endurance? How, how is it? I mean, how, how are you doing? Because we're facing some pretty hard stuff. I mean, let's, let's be really honest right now. We are, we're in the middle of it. I mean, we're, we're in the middle of a real enduring testing time. How's your endurance? I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, that's, that's pretty significant. I mean, we're in the middle of injustice that seems to just pop up its head everywhere. And, and, and it's difficult and it's hard and it's heavy and, and we need to be doing something about it. I mean, it's, it's real. There's elections. I mean, all the crazy that goes with that, the jobs being lost and the health being lost, all these different things, I think actually test our endurance. 
So in the movie, they only win the race after they go lap after lap after lap in spite of the challenges. I mean, it isn't the one they win because it was so easy. I mean, no, they, they had to go through those obstacles. And so it's kind of like our Christian life, our, our, our following after Christ. And you just listen to this statement. The goal of the Christian life is not perfection, but instead a life of patient and persistent progress. See, see we're, not, we're not trying to be perfect. We're actually just trying to keep moving. And so, so many times the story of endurance and the story of you and I winning the race is more built around this idea that I'm patiently, meaning I know it takes time, I'm persistently, I'm not giving up because I fell down or things didn't go right, and I'm progressing, I'm going somewhere, I'm actually moving forward. So the question then with all of that is this, are you further along in your journey than you were a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago? Because that marks endurance. That's, that's what, we're, what we're looking for. So R, run with endurance. Here's the A, all right? A is assemble your crew. <laughs> Get your posse together. Get your people together. Get your homies together. You know, back in, I don't know if they say that anymore, but, you know, gather up your crew. Assemble your crew. See, the 24 hours of Le Mans is a team sport. It, it's not a, not a one-man show. It's not one guy taking his car and he's going to go run the race. No, it's this whole group of people that make it possible. It takes engineers and mechanics and pit crew and promoters and drivers and sponsors. And, and it's a lot like our spiritual journey. We all need help and the help of others to win the race. See, in this next clip, Carol Shelby He's assembling this team. He's gathering up mechanics and he's gathering up a driver. Driver. He's, he's got promoters because Ford comes to him. And I mean, all this is happening, but he's getting this team, this crew. And so check out this clip as he's working with Ken Miles, who's a little rough on the edges. Check it out. Fresh off the plane from England. Now, she's still a little on the rare side of cooked. It's worse than awful. Yeah, it doesn't track. You know, the third gear is too high. The uh, torque is not reaching the road. The steering's loose because the front end gets light. And over 140, thinks it's a... Uh, Airplane. Uh, yeah. And wants to lift off and fly to Hawaii. Anything else? So, so, you know, he's, he's kind of rough on the edges, but sometimes you need people like that in our life, right? Just, just a little rough on the edge. But, but, but the big idea here is that he's assembling his crew, which goes back, let's look at Hebrews again, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, since we, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. In other words, the writer of Hebrews is saying, hey, you're not in this on your own. 
I mean, he's talking about all the people in chapter 11 that have set the example. He said, you're not the only one. <laughs> you're not the only one out there that has done this or can do this or will do this, right? And he's, so he's, he's really saying, hey, just realize this is, a, this is a corporate thing. This is a big group team. This is a team thing. And the team that's went before you is cheering you on. And the team that's with you is going to help you on. I mean, it's all about assembling a crew, you know? So winning the race of endurance is understanding we're not alone in the race, nor should we try to win the race alone? That's, again, Hebrews 11, examples of winning the race of faith, all kinds of people. See, and they made it, so can you. And the real question then from this point is, who is in your crew? Who, who's in your crew? Have you surrounded yourself with people that are going to help you win the race? Or maybe people that are not going to even help at all? I mean, you got to ask yourself that hard question sometimes because sometimes maybe you got to have different friends. Maybe maybe there just needs to be different people in your life. Maybe 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 you got to rethink your friends and and the people that are surrounding you because this is such a critical issue to you and I finishing the race. See, we all need people on the journey that that will spur us on to make it to the end, all right? So here's here's C. So R, run with endurance. A, assemble your crew. C is cut the extra weight or cut extra weight. You know, and and you're probably looking at me like, yeah, you could cut some extra weight. I I get it. Well, I'm not running marathons either. That's probably those two things go together, right? But, But our text in Hebrews says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. In other words, let's get rid of the bulk. Let's get rid of the things that are causing resistance. Let's get rid of the things that are, that are impeding, if you will, our progress. The, those things that are holding us back. So in the movie, they were struggling. Uh, you know, Shelby and Miles were struggling and all the mechanics to get the car to go fast enough to compete with Ferrari. They just couldn't get it there. And the problem they found out was... First of all, it was just too heavy. There was too much junk in the car. There was too much junk that they didn't need, too much added weight that they just needed to get rid of so they could go faster. A lighter car goes faster with a bigger motor, right? And they realized they had too much drag. In other words, it was this idea that because they were heavy and because they didn't have the right aerodynamics, they couldn't move easily and they were held back. It's a very spiritual idea that goes with that. So so check out this clip as they begin to try to figure out, hey, how do we do this? How do we deal with what's holding us back? This is ridiculous. Yeah. So, uh, Shell. Grabbing air. That's the problem. Over 90. Air's getting in, not getting out. It's the nose. I can feel it in the wheel. Mr. Miles, if there's a problem, the computer will find it. Oh, Charlie, get some scotch tape and a ball of wool. All right. Good, good, good. So now let's just uh, get all of this junk out. All right, Pops? Uh, yeah, yeah. Concur. Come on, guys. What are they doing? Making your car faster. There, right there. Airflow's getting stuck. I see it! Yarn blow straight up! Yep. Front's lifting! This car wants to go faster. I feel it. Any lighter, we're getting fragile. Took 70 pounds out of her in the last week. She's outputting max horsepower from this displacement. So put in a bigger engine. Where are we going to put it on the roof? So, so what's the what's the lesson? What I mean, as you watch that clip and we think about our text, what's the lesson we can take away? And again, I think it's very simply this: anything that impedes our spiritual progress has to be stripped away has to be cut away. We need to cut it out, right? We need, we need to get rid of it. You know, whether it be bad habits or, 
or bitterness. You know, maybe we've got the extra weight of resentment. You know, we've got this whole trash bag full of offenses that we just can't let go of. Or maybe, maybe it's a, a little private stash of pride that we constantly hold on to. Or maybe it's an addiction that we just don't want to deal with. I mean, whatever it might be. I mean, and it's kind of interesting because there's this little idea in the movie and, and I've heard about it before because if you go up to the mountains and you, you go down the mountains and you see these runaway truck things the, where you go off and I'm, I'm like, what in the world happens? Well, that happens because trucks will lose their brakes. And I didn't connect the two thoughts together, but it might be because of what is called brake fade. In other words, your brakes get overused or over, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They overheat, they, they, too much friction, there's too much weight, they, and they break down. And when they start to break down, you actually are in danger of wrecking, right? Break fade leads to, leads to wrecking. And so in the story, in, in Ford versus Ferrari, they have break fade and Ken Miles almost gets killed in the process. So check out this clip. got brake fade. He's off! He's off! Go inside. You just stay there. Ken! 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 Come on. The brakes. So, wow, that's kind of scary, isn't it? I mean, you know, you see the, the brakes were just glowing red. I mean, but I was thinking about it this way. Is instead of brake fade in a car or truck, that makes a lot of sense. What about faith fade? What about us having so much extra weight and, and friction, if you will, in our lives or, or things that shouldn't be a part of us? We're, we're, we're dragging around that resentment. We're dragging around that offense. We're dragging around whatever it might be. And because of that, it's causing faith fade. In other words, we're not where we should be in the race, and we're not progressing in the race because this is happening. Now, and, so one more thought, all right, about this scripture, we'll go on to the last one. Is It says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips, trips us up. I think it's interesting. I never noticed, it. I've, I've read this scripture I don't know, 100 times over the years. And I've never noticed this little phrase in here. I mean, I mean, not this little phrase, but this, this thought in here that it's actually two different ideas. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down is this very general thing. You know, whatever, anything and everything that just holds us back. But the second part is a very specific thing. It says, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Now, I think the the sin that trips us up can be very unique to each individual. Maybe the sin that trips you up is gambling. That's the one. Maybe it's that, that, that porn addiction that you can't quite get away from. It just always calls you back. It's, it's catching you. It's drinking too much. I mean, I, I don't know what it is. But it's a very specific sin. It's almost like a pet sin that we've we kind of gotten used to. And it's like the writer of Hebrews is saying, hey, you know what? You want to run this race with endurance? You, you assemble your crew and cut out this extra weight and win this race? You're going to have to deal with that pet sin. You're going to have to deal with that relation thing, relationship thing that you keep going back to again and again. How you seem to find yourself with that same kind of guy. You know, I don't know what it is, but it's very specific. You've got to strip it off, all right? So, so here's the last point. So run with endurance, assemble your crew, cut extra weight, and keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. See, to win the race of endurance, we have to maintain our focus on the prize. In other words, we can't lose sight of why we're there. In the 24 hours of Le Mans and Ford versus Ferrari, it was an overnight dark race, 24 hours, and the drivers would get really sleepy, and so they had to stay focused on what they were doing. Otherwise, it wouldn't go well. 
Now, here's what it says, how, we're, how we do this. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and protect, perfect, perfects our faith. In other versions, it says he's the author and the finisher, right? And, and I love the, this three quick bursts of description that we have in the text here that the writer gives us. Keep your eyes on Jesus as the champion, that he's the ultimate winner, winner, that he's paved the way. Keep your eyes on Jesus as the initiator. He wrote the book. He's the author. He started it. Keep your eyes on Jesus as the perfecter. He will complete it. He is the orchestrator. He's the one that's going to make it happen. He's our fulfillment. I mean, just really cool words right there. And I think it, the whole thing is this. No one else, no one else is worthy for us to keep our eyes on if we're going to win the prize. It's Jesus is the prize. He, he is our fulfillment. He is the completion. He is that, right? I mean, I'll just say it this way. I mean, if you're looking for me to be your focal point, I'm going to disappoint you. I mean, every human being is going to disappoint you. But Jesus will never. I mean, he just won't. So in the movie, the, the Ford execs wanted Miles, Ken Miles, the driver, to back off. They wanted Shelby to back off and not push for the individual win and make it like a corporate win, which was okay, but they were kind of there for another reason, right? They wanted to win the whole thing. But Miles and Shelby, they kept their eyes on the prize, and they end up setting a lap record, and they made history. And Miles and the Ford team, they beat Ferrari that day. I mean, that day was a historic day in racing. And they endured to the end. Check out this last clip before we close. Six. That's another record. <laughs> it's a perfect lap. So it's an interesting thing as we wrap this up today is that, you know, the end of that is, is kind of an interesting, I'm not going to, spoiler alert, I'm not going to finish it for you, but there's a little twist at the end to how it all ended up and who actually won and different things like that. And, and it kind of reminds me that none of us know how the whole thing's going to end. We don't know how long we have. I mean, we, we don't know the length of our race. 
I mean, like Jesus. Jesus, he had 33 years, you know. I mean, you might have 60, you might have 70, 80, you might have 20. I don't, I don't know. We don't know that. And see, Jesus, comparatively, he ran the perfect lap. He ran the perfect race, and ours is broken. And so somehow we've got to be connected to Christ in this process if we're going to make it through. Keep our eyes on Jesus, right? So check out the last couple of verses. Hebrews chapter 12, last part of verse 2. It says, because of the joy awaiting him, talking about Jesus, he endured. He endured the cross. I mean, this idea that Jesus could see past the painful moment of what he was going on, what was going on, to the greater moment that was just around the corner. It says he endured. He, he was our example, right? He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. In other words, all the embarrassment of being stripped and, and nailed to a cross. I mean, not embarrassment. I mean, we're talking shame. We're talking heavy duty like shame, ugly, right? And he did that out of love for you and I. Goes on, says, now he is seated in the place of honor besides God, beside God's throne. I love that little phrase because it's this picture in my mind that I always have that G, here's the Father in heaven. It, you know, he's at the head of the table and then right beside him is Jesus. And then there's this huge long table and Jesus is sitting at the table waiting for you and I to arrive as we finish our race. He's already done it. He's already paved the way. He's the champion. And we get to sit at the same table and, and endure, if you will, the same race to make it. And so it's just kind of a cool picture. Verse 3 then, it says, Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. In other words, think about how he was beaten, how he had spikes and nails driven through his feet and his hands. He was whipped, crown of thorns forced on his head. I mean, think about the sacrifice. Think about the pain. Think about all that he endured and realize, Lord, I can endure what I'm going through right now for you. That it's worth it. And, and I can have the endurance to get to the place that you want me to get. So Jesus made a way for you and I. So I just want to encourage you today before we close, don't give up. Don't give up, no matter, no matter what. I mean, <laughs> run with endurance, assemble your crew, cut the weight, keep your eyes on Jesus, but don't give up, all right? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word and for your truth today. I thank you that, God, you are faithful. The Lord, even in the difficulty and the pain of the race sometime, you're right there with us. And so, Lord, I pray for those that maybe are struggling along the journey right now, that they would be encouraged to know that you're there, you've made it, and there's been others that have done the same, and that we can too. Lord, I pray for that encouragement by the Spirit. And I pray also today for those that have never, ever said, Jesus, be my Lord. Jesus, be my Savior. Lord, I'm a, I'm a sinner, and I desperately need you to take over the wheel of my life and drive this race. Lord, Lord, guide me. Show me what you want to do. Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Let's not stop here. Connect with us. You know, Troy talked to us about keeping our eyes on Jesus. He is the champion. He is the initiator, and he is the perfecter of who we are. So maybe today is the day that you said, I'm going to start following Jesus. We would really love to connect with you about that decision. Or maybe you're just kicking the tires today and saying, Matt, I would love to find out more about Southridge and what it's all about. And in both cases, go to southridgelife.com. There's a little button called response card. Go ahead and fill out that virtual response card and we'll send you all the information that you requested, okay? So don't, uh, don't leave this opportunity and do that right now. Now, another way to connect with us is through Growth Track. We have that in the first, second, and third, third Sundays of the month. And that is a really in-depth, one-hour class each Sunday that talks about what we're about, who we are, and how to get involved here at Southridge. I want to encourage you. It's, it starts at noon. I just want to encourage you that if that's you and you want to get involved, go ahead and check out the details at southridgelife.com. Now, another way to respond today is through your giving. 
Now we do that through two different ways. One is we call it tithes and one is through Kingdom Builders offering. And Troy talked a lot about the Kingdom Builders offering. That's how we connect with missionaries and missions around across the street and around the world. And really that also, I should say, whoa, you know, that's how we plant churches and that's how we do like building updates and stuff like that. It's above and beyond our tithes. Tithes are really just like 10% of our gross earnings. And what that whole thing is all about is really just funding and partnering with the ministry here at Southridge. So if you wanna take that next step and engage with, engage with us there, go ahead, go to southridgelife.com and there's a giving tab there. You can find out all the details about it and you can do that. Next up, let's take a few minutes and respond to God and what he's talking to you out through the message as the worship team leads us in some songs.
the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Cause you are good. 
this series, God at the Movies. We've got another great movie set next week, so please come back, join us here for the next message on God at the Movies. Have a great week.